My name is Jean-Paul Goulot, and I work in the Centro Asistencia a la Reproducción Humana de Canarias, La Laguna, Spain. I will present this surgical video tutorial about hysteroscopic uterine evacuation in cases of misabortion under transabdominal ultrasound guidance. Patients included in this video gave consent for publication and posting of the video online. One of every four pregnancies ends in a pregnancy loss. Chromosomal analysis of products of conception plays a fundamental role in the evaluation and treatment of pregnancy loss. Traditionally, POC samples are obtained through dilatation and curettage. However, embryoscopy has emerged as an alternative. Transabdominal ultrasound guidance has been proposed to monitor hysteroscopic surgeries. However, its use during embryoscopy procedures has not been described so far. The objective of this article is to describe the stereoscopic ultrasound-guided removal of misabortion with a video that illustrates step-by-step -step this technique. Embryoscopy is indicated in early pregnancy loss with the presence of an intrauterine gestational sac between 5 and 10 weeks determined by ultrasound measurement. It is contraindicated in cases of heavy bleeding and signs of pelvic infection. We perform embryoscopies under deep sedation with a full bladder under transabdominal ultrasound guidance. With a 5 mm compact hysteroscope, forceps and scissors are used for sampling and dissection. Continuous normal saline flow is used with a pressure ranging from 80 to 100 mm of mercury. We start with a 80 mm of mercury pressure setup. If there's no adequate distension or visualization of the gestational sac, we increase the pressure. This slide illustrates the anatomy of the early gestation. We can see the estrambionic cellum, the amniotic cavity, the embryo, and the yolk sac. When we perform an embryoscopy, first we enter the estrambionic cellum. Then we can see the yolk sac, the amniotic cavity, and the embryo. This is a case of an early gestation. We can see the yolk sac, the amniotic cavity, and the embryo. Step 1. We perform an abdominal ultrasound previous to the stereoscopic entrance. To confirm the presence of misabortion, and localize the gestational sac and the embryo. Step 2. Stereoscope entrance. Anatomy of the cervix and uterine isthmus change during pregnancy. That's why, in this step, ultrasound guidance is of paramount importance. We can see clear the tip of the hysteroscope by ultrasound and how we have to go in to reach the gestational site. Hysteroscope entrance view is not clear as in other hysteroscopic indications because of the anatomical changes of pregnancy. On ultrasound guidance, we can clearly see the tip of the hysteroscope and we can see where we have to go to reach to the gestational sac. Step number three is the localization and opening of the gestational sac. We localize the gestational sac and evaluate implantation. Then, we open the sac with scissors, making a 5 mm hole, and we go through it with the hysteroscope, entering the strambionic cellum. And then we evaluate the different structures from the early gestation. We can see the yolk sac, the embryo with the very small amniotic cavity and the umbilical cord vessels. Step 4. Embryo grasping. We grasp the embryo with forceps and go out with the entire stereoscope and deposit the sample in a correctly labeled container. Step 5. Chorionic bilious sampling. We enter again with the stereoscope and localize the chorionic bilious. This is the coronic bilious shape, so when we identify the coronic bilious, we grasp the bilious with forceps 
and go out with the entire stereoscope and deposit the sample in a correctly labeled container. Step 6. Gestational sac dissection. We can do this step with forceps or scissors. We separate the gestational sac from the decidua and then grab the sac and go out. This is another case in which we did the dissection of the gestational sac with scissors. Step 7. Gestational sac extraction. In some cases, the extractions can be done just grasping the sac and going out. In other cases, we can't get out the sac because of the sac volume or poor quality view because of bleeding, as we can see in this video. In these cases, we use a 6 mm aspiration cannula connected to a control pressure vacuum. The objective is not to do a curettage. We aspirate inside the cannula the already dissect sac for extraction, trying to do no harm to the endometrium. Now we will give you some tips and tricks of this technique. Sometimes the sac could collapse. The better way to solve this problem is to localize the gestational sac by ultrasound and open it with scissors. When we enter the gestational sac, it will distend and we can see the structures. Other complication could be bleeding. In this case, try to put the tip of the stroscope the nearest we can to the sac. Then we open the sac, we enter the sac, and we will have a clear view. Another advantage of embryoscopy is that it allows direct visualization of embryonic anomalies. As we can see, in this case of umbilical cord cyst, or in this case of an encephaly, where we, with embryoscopy, we can clearly see the anatomical defect. In conclusion, POC biopsy under direct visualization during operative stereoscopy is feasible and could limit maternal contamination. Embryoscopy enables the macroscopic evaluation of the embryo and trophoblast in cases of miscarriage, as well as target biopsy of the embryo and trophoblast separately. This technique may be less disruptive to the endometrium and less invasive than DNC. Thank you for your attention.